Hello, this is Mr. Callahan from Naperville North High School. Uh, today, I am going to be giving a tour, a little tutorial on the website Replit, which we will use as our primary IDE for this class. Um, so the nice thing about Replit is that it is in the cloud, entirely browser-based. It'll allow us to uh, write and run all of the code we need to write from the browser, which means you can just use your Chromebook and you're good to go for this class. Um, so the other nice thing is it allows us to collaborate on code with other classmates and me. Uh, so that's a, a huge feature of Replit that, that we'll get into some today. Um, but um, to get started, I have you navigate to the URL repl.it. You're going to land at this screen. And when you get here, you unless you already have an account, you will likely need to sign up for one. So click sign up. I'll take you to this screen, and then you will be signing up with your Google single sign on. All right, so that's your Naperville 203 district account. Um, please sign up with that. That will make things a bit easier. Um, I'm gonna get, just get my account, I'm gonna use my GitHub. But once you do get into your account, and by the way, you will need to do like an email verification, I think, before that allow you, you in and stuff. Um, but once you have that all settled, you'll go ahead and get into your account here and you will be greeted at the home screen. So yours will probably look different than mine here. Um, and um, this is where you'll land, but this is, is you will quickly get out of here. Um, one thing to point out before we do move on, though, is that um, from the home, you, there are lots of different Replit features, many of which we will not use over here on the left-hand side. Feel free to um, research these, explore these as much as you want to. Um, one thing you may want to do right away, though, is you might want to set up your profile if you have a picture you want to use or whatnot. You can do that from here. Um, also, just point out that there's this little notification where you will be able to see any you know, notifications you have. So like if someone perhaps invites you to collaborate on a REPL with them, it might pop up in your notifications. All right, but as I said, we're gonna quickly move on from this screen because most of the work will happen in your REPLs. So if you click on my REPLs over here, it, it takes you to basically like a file manager for all of the different REPLs you might create. And you will quickly be creating lots and lots of different REPLs. So it might be nice, even though there is a search fe feature here up top to search your REPLs, it might be nice to have some organization. And I suggest you make a programming one folder for this class. So new folder, it's right up here. You can click that, create a programming one folder. And then for my class, at least, we start at unit zero. So you might want to also create a folder for each unit. So for unit zero, I'll go in here. And once I'm in here, if I want to launch a REPL, which we're going to do together here, this is where I can do it from. It'll save it um, and organize it for me here. All right. Um, so these are a couple existing ones I already have. So this is what it'll look like once you have some created. Um, but we are going to go ahead and create one together here. Um, and if you go to the very top right of the screen, there's a little plus. That is the Add a New REPL button. All right. And <clears throat> there is an option to import from GitHub. We won't be using that for this class. Um, what we'll be doing most of the time is either creating a Python REPL or a Python with Turtle REPL. And it's important that you choose the correct one um, because they they were not, are not going to work, um, um, or some of the code is not going to work in in one and the other, you know, and vice versa. So, uh, so what we'll do most of the time, I guess, would just be a regular Python REPL. I'm just going to call this one demo. Uh, you can make it public or private, um, and you can toggle that from the get-go right here. You can always change it. Um, so. We can, we can talk about that more later. Um, I, I tend to leave mine public unless it's for a specific reason I need to make it private. 
So I'll go ahead and create this REPL. All right. And then now it brings you in to the interface where you'll actually write and run your code. And you can see, just to give you a tour of this screen, uh, you can see that this is split into several different panes, all of which are adjustable. And the first one uh, I'm gonna talk about is the left-hand side panel over here. Right, this is really a collapsible panel from these icons over here. So you can see currently it defaults to open up the files. You can toggle that. Um, you can toggle all of these. Um, the other ones are um, files, version control, packages, debugger, settings. Um, you're going to spend most of your time in files, so clicking on the various files you're going to be working in, and possibly settings to adjust um, just some various settings uh, for your account. Um, so we're going to get into all these in a second. Um, let me talk more about the other windows you're going to see. So let me uncollapse that. All right, over on the right-hand side, you've got at the top, you have um, the code editor. This is where you're going to be able to write your code, right? Um, and you can see it tells you which file you're currently working in up here. So main.py is the file we're working in. This is where we can run some code. And it's going to have line numbers over here. It does your Python syntax highlighting um, for you. And um, there is an auto format over here. I haven't really got this to work very well. Um, perhaps it's still a you know, in progress feature. I'm not sure. Um, but in theory, this could help you with the Python formatting, language formatting. Um, so this is where you write your code. So that's an example, a one line example for you. And then down here, this is the other screen. And this is when you run your code, this is where the output will display. Um, so if this is the code editor, then this is going to be um, the shell, the interactive shell that you'll be able to work in. Right, with the shell, you can see that it tells you the version of Python you're currently working in, um, a date, and then it, um, it gives you this little uh, orange uh, carrot. Uh, arrow symbol. And what that means is that this is, you can type here and it can um, interpret your code for you in real time. So this is the shell. So it's interactive because I can type something like five plus five, press enter, and I can get immediate results. So it will tell me, it, it'll evaluate that expression for me and print the output. Um, also, when you run your code, this is where the output will show up. So when I print test, that will show up down here as output um, from my program. Now, once you have um, uh, some stuff showing up in your shell down here, um, there are some options you can find. Clear is a nice one that I use quite often. It gets messy, you can always clear the screen. Um, and um, other options for this, if you have like dual screens or something set up at home, you can get, uh, pop this out to a new tab, do, do a two screen, which, which might be nice. That's an option that works well. So those are pretty much the main windows. Like I said, you can set these up whatever, however you prefer. Um, also up here, um, when you create a new REPL, a rep, think of a REPL as kind of like a project. So when you create this REPL, you want to give it a name. So we just call this demo. You can describe what's happening here. Um, you can delete it from here and you can toggle the public private from here. You can also fork it from here. So what forking is, is if I have this project started and I want to make a copy of it for myself or someone else and continue working on it, but save the existing version um, as is, I can fork and it will create a second version of this project with everything saved in it um, just under a new name. So now I have, have demo one. 
Now, if I want to get back to my REPL and see that first one, I can go back into the folder where I saved it, and I can see that now I have two REPLs. Right? And there's a, a forked version of it, which I can work in, or I can continue working in that original version, which I'm just going to do in this case. All right, so that's what forking is for your projects. All right, let's talk a bit more about setting up your interface. So to do that, let's go down to settings. Currently, the layout is set to be stacked. I don't care what you prefer for this. So um, if you like side by side better, go for it. Um, I will work in stacked. You can toggle light and dark themes. I think dark is easier on the eyes. That's why I prefer that but feel free to change it. Font size, if you need to fit more on the screen, you can, you can toggle that to be smaller. Um, I tend to have it in, in large or huge, just so it's easier to read for you guys. Um, you can toggle tabs and spaces here. Um, you, If you have a certain preference, go for it. If you just leave it at the default, you'll probably be, be good. So I think I have mine usually set up as tabs and indent size to four. Um, um, four is pretty readable. I think that's like the, the recommended Python um, indentation. Um, and Python cares a lot about indentation. So um, my suggestion would be four. But if, if two works for you, go for that too. I, I rarely see anyone use eight. It can get kind of messy if you use eight. I would suggest using two or four. Um, Key binds, you can just leave as default unless you want to explore other stuff. Um, wrapping, um, this is a nice little feature. So when you're writing code, sometimes you um, you run out of room on the screen. So for example, if I have a lot of stuff on this line of code, eventually I run out of room on the screen. So you can see that happen if I just narrow, narrow my window here. So what happens with the soft wrap is that it will continue line one, but it will just wrap it around for you. So I'm still on line one. I'm still typing on line one here. It's just wrapping it for me. Um, that's kind of nice. I will keep that on most of the time um, just because I don't like having to scroll left and right. It's quite annoying. And I'll show you what that would be like if I turned the wrapping off. What that would mean is that once you went off the screen with your typing, you would be required to, to scroll in order to see the end of the line of code. And so that's why I will keep your soft wrap on most times. Uh, lastly, code intelligence <clears throat> is your last setting down here. You can see my, I have mine disabled. If I enable it, just to show you what this does, um, I think it's going to enable it for you to start is once I start typing, it's going to give me suggestions, um, which can be really handy, you know, so, you, you know, if you don't remember something or as just like a shortcut way to um, access a function or something. But um, when you are learning, as you are doing in programming one, it's not the best idea to have this enabled because what it does is it gives you reminders and it it's kind of like an aid to memory. So you want to memorize this stuff. So you should disable your code intelligence. And I recommend you do this at least through programming one. Um, once you're in programming two and you're more comfortable with the Python language and its, it's syntax and all that, then maybe you can enable code intelligence. But I, I recommend everyone turn this off for programming one. And that will just force you to memorize stuff. There's no advantage you would get, by the way, if you if you had enabled this um, um, over anyone else. So um, anyways, uh, on the left hand side here, these other icons, I skipped over three of these in the middle. Version control. Um, we're not going to use this. So you can basically skip over this one. At least I have no plans in using that. Packages we really won't use this much either. Just just a bit, perhaps. Um, if there's a certain you know, library of code you want to access, 
you could search for it here and import it into your, into your code. Um, won't use that much. You can pretty much ignore that for now. And the debugger, you can also uh, ignore for now. Um, this is just a way to help debug your code. Um, but as I said, the one you'll work in the most really is the files. This is what I usually have open, um, just because I might be, be needing to um, jump to different Python files that I'm working in. Um, so with files, there's some important things to know. Number one is you can create a new file. So um, if I do that, I can create another file. And Python files have to end in .py. Right? The file extension is .py. So if you're creating a new Python file that you want to um, work in, make sure you name it whatever file name .py. So if I want a second file called test, I can create test.py. All right. And, um, and once you do that, you can create as many as you want. You can also create folders. Um, probably won't do that a whole lot for our class, but you know, if you have um, um, a large code base you're working with, you could certainly create folders. You can also upload files. You have a, a you know, you downloaded a Python file from somewhere and you want to upload it and see what it does. Um, you can upload folders of code. You can also download your code as a zip. I may ask you to do this at some point. Um, and, and that works. So you can also, it says pro tip, you can also drag and drop. So that's nice too. So if you got a you know a file you want to work in, you can just drag and drop it over here and it'll upload it for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, so, oh, the other thing that's super important is uh, there is a main.py that is automatically created for you. And if you click on the little extra info, uh, it says you can open up in, in a new tab or you can copy link. It doesn't allow you to rename it. So you have to have a main.py file in your REPL project. Um, and that is the, the file that when you click run is going to execute. So what that means is if you have any other files in your project and you want them to run, you need to be running them from the main file, right? See, if I click on test.py, it allows me to rename it. And open, you can also open tab which will allow you to have a couple open as little tabs if you want. Don't use that a whole ton because you have access to them right over here. Um, you can also copy the link from here and delete them from here. Um, but, but back to the main.py, um, if you want to run test and, and see what happens here, I'm just going out of here. If I wanted to do print this, for example, I would need to make sure I run an import statement over in this main file. So we'd say like import test. And when I run it now, you can see that that first main.py, this line of code uh, up here ran. And then also in sequence, it also ran this file and printed just test. So that's how you get different um, Python files to, to run. Right? If I didn't have this and I tried to run my code, I wouldn't get the output from this. This file would not run. Um, so it's really important that you are able to to run different files from the main. So let me add that back in just in case you miss it. So import, and then whatever the file name is. And notice the way I named it is just the name. You don't need to include the py part of it. Just import test will import your test Python file. All right. Um, let me think what else you may need to know about. Um, oh, you can run from up here. Um, click on this, and that will run your code, as we have already done. Um, 
but there is also um, some shortcuts. So you can look up the keyboard shortcuts, I think in the help down in the lower left, it, it shows you these um, and, and you're welcome to use those too. So like there's a shortcut to run the code, which is control enter. And that'll just run your code automatically for you. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's not a bad idea to get familiar with some of those as well. Okay. Um, the other important feature of Replit we'll use, another reason Replit is so nice, is it allows for collaboration. Right. One way you can collaborate is by sharing your REPL. Um, and if you share your REPL, which is basically giving someone access to your REPL's URL, as long as it's public, they will be able to fork that REPL and, and start working on it as if it were their own. It's not like a Google Doc in that case. So in that case, they would be forking it into their own project and then continuing working from wherever you had left off. Um, but really cool option, which we'll use for pair programming in this class, is that you can invite people to your REPL. And in that case, it will actually work as a Google Doc where you'll both be on the REPL at the same time and, and working together on it. You each have your own cursor. So if I want to invite another person, I happen to have another REPL account. And if I wanted to invite my other REPL account to collaborate on this REPL project, I can invite them. So I can either do it by username or email, or I could copy and paste this code to someone. Um, and that will allow people to um, collaborate on your REPL. So you might do this for a, a partner in class for pair programming. You might um, you might invite me if you need help on something. Um, that was was really useful um, during the, the remote learning. And once that person joins your REPL, once that person joins your REPL, let me see. Yeah, so you'll get this cool chat box in the on the side that you can open up and collapse. And currently it says one of one online, right? Um, but this will tell you how many people are currently online when more people join. Um, and you can chat back and forth. So if you're not in the same location, you can communicate this way. So you, so you can also do you know Google Hangouts or you know, Google Meet or whatever you want to use, but this is a nice built-in feature to Repl that you can communicate. Um, so you can type and send information back and forth. You can toggle this to different sides of the screen, collapse it. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that will be a really, really nice pair programming feature. Um, so we'll use that for the pair programming. Now, when you turn your code in to me, you will not be inviting me to collaborate. Rather, you'll be just copying the REPL link. And the REPL link is just the URL. So it's up here, right? You can either copy from here or you can copy the REPL link from here. And that's the link you turn in to Canvas, right? Geez, I think that's about it. So um, I can't think of anything else, at least for now. Um, so good luck getting up and running. If you have any questions, please just reach out.